assessment for Eugene. Um, this arrived today from Austria. A nice strap. Very nice. And it's just a, an initial assessment. And uh, it is currently wound up tight and not running. Chrono hand not resetting to zero. Now let's pop the back off and take a look. Something strange there on the case. Uh, let's see if we can focus on that. Hmm, very odd. Right, let's uh, have a notch. Yeah, let's just uh, have a look at this up close here, see if I can get this to focus. There we go. Some strange residue on the edge of the case. I um, don't know if that's glue. I shall have to inspect that closer, but uh, just on that little bit of the edge of the case there. Not sure what that is. I think it's glue. It's uh, it's breaking off quite easily, and the case isn't damaged below it that I can see. Yeah, that looks that looks like glue which is um, glue near a watch movement is never, never a good thing, but hopefully that's just uh, a little bit there, which I wonder what that's for. There's, there's actually some shiny residue there on the strap. I'm wondering if somebody has glued this strap at some point, perhaps. And that's what the residue is on the case. Hopefully that'll be that'll be what it is, because we certainly don't want glue inside the movement. Because glue inside a movement is never advisable under any circumstances. So looks reasonably clean looking. Start, stop, reset functions are working, but the seconds hand is, as you saw, not in the correct place. There we go. So it's not going fully into the start position, but there we go. Um, I'll have to double check this movement. I'd, I'd assumed when we when we discussed this it was a 48, but it's it's actually not. Um, only slight differences. It is a cam lever action. Very similar. Just uh, slight little differences. The minute wheel jumper spring down here, which is bent. You can see that's slightly bent away from the minute recording wheel there. Um, Sometimes, if we're lucky, we can tease these back into shape, but it depends. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. That looks reasonably clean. Let's uh, relieve the spring. Tension, if I can get into the click. Just about. A little bit more awkward to get into than the 48. I can see it there, but I just can't. There we go. That's better. That spring's not sitting there wound up. If I look at the balance. I'm quite surprised that uh, she said it did run briefly. Looking at this, it must have been running at an incredibly poor amplitude because that balance is very reluctant to run, very sticky. Um, hmm, interesting. Um, I said that's just an initial inspection. It looks reasonably clean. Generally speaking, the hairspring doesn't look too bad. It's not marked up. Um, one or two of the screw heads are. The, the balance cock is. One or two of the screw heads are marked up, but I don't think this has had a lot going on inside it. Uh, that could actually be a good thing. It could mean that it's only, it, it's literally just old and, uh, and there's lots of gummed up oil and such. There's one service mark inside the case back. And can't actually make any of that out unfortunately so I can't even get a rough idea of of the date when that might have last been done um, but hopefully what you'll have there is um, is lots of dried up gunged up oil and grease um, well, I'm a little concerned at how sticky that balance is. There's no, it could just be gummed up oil, but there's, uh, it really doesn't want to spin at all. Um, okay. Case back back on. Going back to the dial, we have some wear and pitting to the dial. We've got markers at the at eleven, one, five, and seven, which little divots they that's clearly missing something. I'm not sure what. Um, but yeah, very aged and weathered dial, but quite charming with it. It's, um, it's not too bad looking overall at an initial inspection. Hopefully um, when we dig a little bit further into it, we'll just find that it's caked with old oils and greases and, uh, and the like. And uh, with a bit of luck, we can get things moving again.